let's have a great week face of uh, Vittorio we had Chris on Friday but you can watch the recording on our YouTube page so we record our sessions as well as our interviews and in fact edit it so if you just want to hear the interview it's separate hi Kevin how are you I'm Patrick I'm glad you enjoyed Hello, Ziggy, my trading warrior brother, Windsor. Everyone doing okay? Okay, so last week we were looking for a turn in the dollar all week long. Uh, actually, we thought we might get a little weakness after the NFP, but the NFP was the trigger and the catalyst. I don't think anyone in our community was surprised. Hi, Simon, how are you? I don't think anyone was surprised, not just my opinion, Simon. I have very talented trading minds to pick. I can pick their brain at two in the morning here because I have access to what Nick and Blake and Steve and Greg are thinking, right? Uh, of course, I have my own opinions, but I sure don't like to fade anyone on this team. How about you guys? Do not fade Forex Analytics. That's my, that's my <laughs> friendly advice to you. Okay, so the pound let it, the pound let it, uh, we were, you know, we talked about it. I think a lot of people caught the pound on the downside, maybe the GAD. Yeah, don't fade the uh, Nostra Volgi, especially on Canada, okay? Very disciplined trader, I agree with you, V. So here's Greg's look uh, that we're entering a corrective period in the euro. Uh, to me, it looks like the euro is putting in a bear flag right now. It looks like a pretty complex, you know, this will be A, and then we get an ABC for B, and then we finish it off here. And it's not just Grega that thinks at least short-term highs are in for a correction. I agree that we're going to see these highs again being taken out, but I also believe we're going to be taking out the lows that we had from Friday. Give me a why if you're with me. So Freebie Dale is showing that Greg agrees with that, right? Here's Nick. Nick agrees with it, right? Showing the low. Hers is taking a little bit uh, long term. The natural place for it to come back to, I think, is about 115, the weekly breakout. So that's my view on Euro. Let's just take a look at the charts here. This to me looks like flagging action. This was pretty impulsive on Friday, as Greg and Steve would say. So I'd be selling rallies maybe between here and 1820 if it happens, and looking for this low to be taken out, maybe not by a lot, but to complete the A wave down, and then we get a B. So favoring shorts there. Uh, last week, the reason I was more bearish a pound uh, then the euro was, I didn't think the euro pound had reached its highs yet, but now we're starting to get a lot of non-confirmation. Steve talked about it too. So perhaps we get some type of three drive here. You know, just a little simple wedge. You know, this high confirmed, right? Confirmed high. This high diverged, but it was still a pretty high reading. So let's See if we can get one more high up towards the 9060 range. And while the euro's correcting, I do think that we'll get a correction in euro pound. Steve has it, I'm doing a show later, as kind of a rising wedge on euro pound. So there could be corrective action here in euro pound. Everyone with me on that? And be careful with the guppy. You know, I want to uh, short the guppy, although, I, you know, in fact, I read all of FA's stuff, and they're pretty bearish, uh, a lot of the yen crosses, if you've noticed as a subscriber. So uh, the guppy, we already have a little two drive on the one hour. I think there'll be better levels. We could get a three. Uh, there could be a counter trend scalp down here at 44.10 if we get a three drive here in the guppy. Uh, the, these would be position shorts for me back up here at 560. So uh, that's the way I see things coming into this week. You know, the, we're going to get a, a – the dollar correction has begun, right? So the dollar looks a lot like a bull flag here. Here's your flagpole. 
Could we trade 9310 again? Certainly. But I don't think this is a high. And I think 9460, 95, a measured move off this flagpole is doable this week. And with that, since we had the Hall of Fame game on Thursday night, I, I'd like to throw a post pattern to the all-star receiver, Blake Morrow. Blake, are you downfield running a post? I, I, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> no. How are you, buddy? Good. Good. Uh, happy, uh, happy Monday to you, Dale. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Should yeah, be, uh, you know, uh, we should get some follow through to what happened Friday. And, you know, I, what I'm, I'm very proud of is that I don't think anyone was surprised by uh, bear market rally in the dollar because we were prepping people all week for it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think so. And, you know, I, 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 I'm, feel pretty good that I made some, I made some good money being long the dollar uh, last week. Uh, you know, w one thing though, I, I, I don't want to get too terribly excited. I, I'm long dollars right now uh, as well. I, I picked up, I, I had um, closed all my dollars pretty in a pretty, pretty timely fashion on Friday, reopened um, dollar longs on, on Friday afternoon after they started bouncing a little bit so towards the end of the day basically uh and and like in the euro dollar i'm i'm short like at uh, 117.75 so yeah. like i'm 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 underwater a little bit in the uh, in the euro dollar actually i'm sorry i'm short at 117.80 because i added a little bit last night um so i'm short i'm underwater just a little bit in the euro dollar i'm not terribly worried about it but i'm not super excited about it either the 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 fact of the matter is is the euro dollar is still holding above this 117 the this, this spike high right here that that was basically the range highs that comes in at 11715 and so um, yeah. you, if, if you notice friday's lows were 117 i think 30 uh yeah. 117 let me just yeah 117 28 so, so we really have to get below, uh, I would say roughly 117 in order for me to be really excited about being long the dollar or, you know, yeah. see, seeing a, be a better or a better or bigger pullback. I'm not saying it's not going to happen um, because it, I'll, I'll tell you, the dollar actually looks better against, you know, the, the Canadian yeah. looks better against the peso. Um, you know, looks better against the pound, but the euro is just kind of, you know, it, it's, it, there's a lot of bullishness on the euro crosses. I mean, if you look at, if, if you look at like the euro New Zealand, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, at range highs, uh, not range highs, trend highs from the, the last trend that we, we just poked our head up against, uh, euro Aussie. Yeah, the, looks, the Kiwi you know, is exceptionally weak today. It, it is. The Kiwi is, the Kiwi is underperforming. Um, and so, like I, I was saying, I think there's better places to be long the dollar, and and I'm long the dollar against the peso, the Canadian, the Norwegian krona, the Swedish krona, and the euro. So I've got my dollar yeah. exposure spread out. Um, Smart. Smart. Well, you know, I I I do yeah. that I I do that because I um like if Who I'm knows over, which one's going to be the outperformer. Right. When I'm when I'm confident. When I'm confident, it's like okay, it is. There's a reason. Like I'm gonna. There's a reason. I'm 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 short Canadian dollars and I'm long the dollar against the Canadian for this reason. Then that's one thing. But when I'm long the dollar and I and I and and uh, as I explained in the uh, in the week ahead video over uh, over the weekend, I don't have a great argument to be long the dollar other than it's technical. And it's technical is a half-assed reason just to be long or short something um, to me. You know, I, I have to have a thesis or want to have a thesis why I'm long the dollar or short the euro dollar across the board or short the Canadian dollar across the board or long the pound across the board. There's, there, I like to have a reasoning behind that decision making. And, and so today I... Do, and and as I explained to you guys the last couple of weeks, I don't have a good reason to be long the dollar. Like there's 
the the fundamental backdrop on why I should be long the dollar right now just doesn't match it doesn't match up. So therefore, I'm I spread out my risk a little bit against some of the currencies which I think are acting a little better uh, because they're more oversold like the the dollar canadian for example I, you know I, I love the dollar canadian how we 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 had a false breakdown uh okay. two weeks ago and now we're reversing um and the dollar canadian looks i mean look at it it looks damn strong i mean the us dollar mexican peso is up against channel resistance here it's trying to poke its head above 18. you know we scream above 18 it's going to be <clears throat> excuse me really bullish these nordic currencies like the us dollar swedish krona i mean we we we've we're, we're outside of the channel resistance now. Uh, U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. Uh, you, I, I I blogged on FX Street about this uh, a week and a half ago when we were trading down here at uh, 787, and I and it's, you know we're we're at a bunch of technical places here, and so again I'm just spreading out, and and one of the reasons why you guys may ask, well, why are you short the euro then? Well, one of the reasons why I'm short the euro is because of sentiment reasons. So, but but because I'm not a hundred percent convinced about dollar strength, I had to spread out my risk because I don't really have a good a good idea of where the dollar strength is going to come through. At least I think it's going to come through in a, a couple of different ways. Um, so, I you know I'm I'm I'm. I'm a little spread out at this point, and you know I'm not, and I'm I'm making money, um, but the euro dollar is actually the one that's 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 kind of taking it from me at the moment. Well, that's not really working in my favor. Where everything else is working just fine. Um, the euro dollar, though, it, it did hit a 50% retracement here, and you can see how. I'm just going to run you through a couple of the majors. I know Steve likes to cover the the uh, the the crosses. But I just want to take you through some of these you know, majors really quick. You yeah, said something very important, though, Blake, on Friday, and it wasn't market-related, and it stuck with me over the weekend. And, you know, uh, I don't remember everything people said, but, you know, I was talking about, well, the euro could retrace a certain amount of the big break from 140. And, you know, you, you know what you said? You said, I don't care about that. I only care about today. And, you know, that is, uh, you know, a lot of people – get off track by thinking about tomorrow and that was ever, that was so on that spot on because there was plenty to do Friday after the NFP and you were focused on all the areas so you know that that's a hallmark of a trader is you know he's concerned with today and you do the right thing today Blake tomorrow turns out all right so I just well, want to let you know it left an impression in my head oh thanks and, uh, well well, you know, Dale. Okay, so let me let me let me talk you guys through that really quick, and let me explain to you a few things. I I'm really whenever I trade, I'm really concerned about what's happening right now. Um, but I also do like to set myself up for what can take place over the course of the next couple of days, or maybe the next couple of weeks. I like to put myself in a situation where I can swing trade something because I do. I I'd, I'd prefer to swing trade versus scalp um you know all, you know at, 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 at any moment it's that that that's my preferred way of trading but i want to make sure that whatever i'm doing intraday also you know has the ability to 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 work out for a couple of days but um but yeah i'm i i have to really focus on the here and now because if it can't work out here and now then you know, I, I who how needs am I expecting? Who yeah. needs a headache? Who needs can, a headache? <laughs> I can always re-enter. I'm 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 the type of trader that's in front of my computer all the time. So, or or a majority of the time, you know, some of you don't have that luxury. I I mean, I do this for a living. So because I trade yeah, for a living, they would with the phone app, they have that luxury. They do, yeah. That's that's right. With the app, at least you can get updated. But not everybody's a forex analytics subscriber as much as I think everybody should be. I don't, you know. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet, Blake. Not yet. Not yet. Right. But um, but I have the luxury of being in front of the computer most of the time. So I, when I look at something, I go, well, it's not really right, right at this moment in time. I can always exit. Can't you know? Uh, uh, uh close out my loss take a loss really quick and then 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 move back into the market when I feel 
when I, when it's necessary, when I feel it's necessary. And I think that, that, um, for me, keeping that in my mind is, is good. It, you know, I don't, I don't want to sit in losses too long. If it's not working out for me right at this moment, I can always reenter later. And, uh, that, that helps me out quite a bit, but, yeah. um, but thanks for pointing that out. So, yeah. Um, just going through again some of the majors here. The, the euro dollar again. I think it's really important that before I become too directional in the euro being on the short side, I want to make sure that we come back below 117. I mean, this is the the breakout points on 117, 15, whatever it is. We we really need to get below that and stay below it. And then then once we do, I think the the I drew this out. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yawn on you guys, but I was I was up late watching Game of Thrones with my wife last night, so <laughs> it's a stupid TV show. But um, I do think that a move down to trendline support is possible um, should we get below 117. But you know, the euro is like I said, it's outperforming right now, and I'm not I'm not super excited about it at the moment. Uh, you look at the cable. The cable, yeah, we have this bear flag formation, and and the cable, uh, you know, uh, I made good money shorting it on Friday. I got out of it. I did not re-enter, um, which I, I almost did on Friday, and I and I and I, you know, I, I just kind of, I, I opted not to. I don't know why. I just I was looking at other things, and I opted not to get back into the cable. But I did trade the pound. Um, if you guys remember pre non-farm payroll. Uh, um, on Friday, I said, hey, if the dollar strengthens, I want to be short the pound. I did short it, and I actually made money following NFP. So um, so I, I, that's one of the trades that I made my, my, that made my Friday, actually. Um, the Aussie dollar, you know, the Aussie dollar is still performing well. We have to get below the 78 uh, or 78.40. This is a big breakout point here, and the Aussies, you know, uh, like I said, it's it's holding up very very well. The Kiwi, on the other hand, it is underperforming, and we do have the RBNZ on on Wednesday or Thursday morning in New Zealand. But but the RBNZ, you notice how we 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 broke back below the breakout point too, and um, there is a head and shoulder pattern here, guys. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, it 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 it's 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 it happened while I was sleeping. Okay, because a lot of stuff happens in European trade here, but uh, you'll notice that we have this um, we have this head and shoulder pattern here. There's a the shoulder. There's the head. Here's the shoulder, right? So we have this head and shoulder pattern, and it it it, it takes us too. Just so you know, the target here. Takes us down to basically 72 and change from where we're at. Uh, I am not short the Kiwi yet, but you know, looking at this chart, I I should be, and I probably will be later today. You know, if 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 the Kiwi bounces, I'll I'll probably take advantage of it. Um, you know, if we can uh, bounce a little bit, I I just don't know if we're going to because the euro has been so strong overnight. Um, you know, the euro might give back some of these these gains, and if it does, the the Kiwi is probably likely to get dragged down with the euro dollar. If 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 um, the, uh, the 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 dollar continues to bounce against other things, um, here's the Canadian. The Canadian looks great. Uh, I'm long uh, Canadian uh, dollars. I was surprised last night actually. When last night when 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 the market first opened, we dropped down to one twenty five thirty. Or uh, I'm sorry, 126.30. We dropped down to 126.30, and I'm sitting. Uh, it was sitting down here, and I'm like, I, I was thinking to myself, what the hell is it doing down here? And 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 it, I was, I'm I'm long enough. So and and I'm long dollars. You know, as I explained to you, I'm do long dollars against many different currencies right now. So I didn't want to overexpose myself. But I was I was thinking to myself last night. I'm like, man, if I wasn't long the the Canadian right now, I'd be buying this dip. Uh, and and I. Obviously, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I I should have, but I didn't. I'm just long what I'm what I'm long, which is a, almost a third of my dollar position is long the dollar Canadian. So I'm doing well in it right now. Um, but it, it looks good. Remember the the dollar Canadian has been um, just just beat up 
to all get out. But it, it, it's, it's probably getting back to that point where it's nearing, I want to say fair value. Um, I, I'm one, once we get up to what, like 127 50, 128, maybe 129, you know, if we're, if we're that lucky and we get all the way up there, I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant about being short Canadian dollars. I, st I think the dollar Canadian is, is making a longer term uh, um, turn. So what I mean by that is I believe that the dollar Canadian is eventually going to break down towards the, you know, 120, 115 level. I think it's heading this way. Um, I just think this is a near-term bounce. Like, you know, for all these dollar pairs, I really think the dollar is going to continue to get hit. I just think that the dollar itself, and, and I can go look at the dollar index, the dollar itself is just near support. So we're, we're, we're buying, you know, based on these technical support levels, but, but if I had to... If I had to uh, uh, um, imagine where the dollar is going to be going longer term, if I had to just give it to you guys, like you know, like oh, you know, my, you know, I've got a crystal ball, and this is what what's going to happen. We're probably going to head back up here and do something like this. So somewhere up in this neighborhood, uh, I, I'm just you know thinking out loud. That's probably where we're going to turn. I just I don't know specifically where that is, and I don't know. What's going to be the catalyst? I can't, you know. I obviously, I'm no, I'm no, uh, I'm no Nostra, Nostra Pinkert or <laughs> Nostradamus. I, I, I don't, I don't know where things are going to go in the future. I can just, you know, take my best shot at it. But the dollar sentiment-wise is pretty bearish, and I think it's going to, I think it's, uh, you know, I think this bounce is going to continue at least, at least going into this week. Now. Towards the end of the week, I mentioned this on the week ahead video. Hopefully, you guys had watched that. Uh, if you do watch that YouTube uh, uh, video that we put out every Sunday, make sure you uh, subscribe to that. Subscribe to our channel because this way you can get all the interviews that Dale puts together. Um, get all you can watch all those interviews. You can watch all the the update videos. All all great stuff. Um, on that video, I this weekend um, I talked about producer prices and consumer prices on Thursday and Friday. And I think if inflation starts to rear its head a little bit, then it meaning uh, the, the number comes in a little hotter. I think that's going to, that's what's going to be the catalyst that continues to bounce the, uh, the, the dollar index uh, going into next week. If, if, but, but if that you have to keep in mind, inflation has been very benign for the last couple of years. Everybody, everybody's expected inflation to rise. I keep, I, I hear the argument every, probably every 12 months. Oh, this is it. Here comes the inflation data. It's going to get stronger. It's going to get strong. We've been hearing this for years. If today is the day or this week's the week that we really start seeing, you know, uh, a tick up in inflation, so be it. The dollar is going to benefit from it. But, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not overly convinced that that's really going to be the case this week. Um, and the bonds but, are, uh, Blake, the bonds are set up for that event. That if this recent bounce is over and four is over and we're going down in five, the bonds are actually set up to get that kind of news to accelerate of this failure. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, happens. Yeah. It, maybe it does. I mean, maybe the bond market rolls over here and, and we start to see, you know, yields go up and the dollar benefit with, with yields moving higher. Maybe that is the case. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, the bond market longer term, the long, the bond market longer term does look like we're, we're, yeah, it looks like we're, we're really, you know, trying to top here. Um, and I guess the better better chart to look at is like here's the here's the monthly you know, um, you know ten year. I mean, we, bond market looks like it's gonna it's gonna eventually roll over, and then that would be you know obviously yeah. yields would go up and the dollar yeah it'd be huge um, you know but again I trying yeah. to trying to figure out what's gonna happen 15 minutes from now let alone what's gonna happen a yeah. couple of years from now. Um, yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. But I, but I, like I said, I think the dollar looks constructive. Um, it looks uh, constructive against some of these, uh, some of these commodity currencies in particular. You know, like the Aussie, 
the Norwegian Krona looks like we're making the turn here. Um, the, 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 the peso, if it can get above 18, that's going to be really bullish. It's come down a little bit. It's very illiquid. So you got to be careful getting, um, too excited about it until it gets above 18. We get above 18 and the, the, the it's going to be a, a hell of a, hell of a ride, I would think. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking right now. And, and, and I think the dollar looks constructive. I'm just not. 100% sold on my positions being long the dollar at this point. I'm not, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not 100% uh, on board that, that I'm on the right side at this point. Even though I'm making money, it doesn't mean that, uh, that, 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 that I will make money. Um, you're, you're never as comfortable trading counter trend as you are with the trend argument. That, that's a great point, Dale. I never am. And I am counter trend at this point. And I don't, I, I don't like trading counter trend. Um, I do it like right now I'm doing it out of necessity because there's nothing else to do. Uh, so whenever you trade counter trend, you have to be a lot more cautious, uh, a lot smaller on your position size and, um, and, and just, you have to be extra careful. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do uh, right at this point. Um, um, Lucas says, Blake uh, asked a question, would uh, capital repatriation in, in the tax reform um, plus balance sheet reduction from the Fed be a good enough dollar catalyst? You know, that's the argument right now is really um, the balance sheet reduction uh, um, that, that and anybody who's a dollar bull, that's their argument. Well, the Fed's going to reduce their balance sheet. So it's, you know, it's bullish the dollar. I, and I don't know if that's a good enough. And, and we haven't seen any moves on taxes yet, and you know, as as you know, our current administration is having a very difficult time passing any legislation. So, uh, I mean, eh, it could be, I guess, in the future, could be, could be something. Um, uh, I'm looking so at what Sheldon McIntyre is saying. Uh, the weekly 200, it came within a hair of testing the weekly 200. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, uh, we can look at the dollar index and we can, I mean, I always keep the 200 day, 200 day moving average up, um, which, you know, it's, it's right, it's way, way the hell up here. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan on, um, on a 200 week moving average. I know some people look at it, but it doesn't, it's not, the only reason why I look at a 200 day moving average is because I know the whole market is. So if the whole market's looking at it, I got to look at it too. When you go to a 200 week moving average or a 200 hour moving average or a 200 period four hour moving moving average, I, I'm just not I'm not sold on it. But I, I know a, I've I've seen a couple of people mention it, so I you know I don't want to disregard it. But yeah, how we, about, we, what, how about so. what Brett is saying, Blake? Uh, you know this is right up your alley. Uh, he says uh, five out of the last six. Uh, meetings at Jackson Hole, we've had a bullish dollar run. Well, and you know, that, that, that's, that's a, that, that, that I did not know, Brett, and that's actually a good, um, that's a good point, and it really could be the case, uh, because Mario Draghi set the stage that during Jackson Hole, he's going to talk about something very important. Uh, I have to. I, I forget what his comments were like three, four weeks ago. He said he had some big announcement for Jackson Hole. Anyway, if 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 it's a letdown, and the ECB really talks about nothing about you know, um, you know, uh, uh, tightening monetary policy or or about what uh, the, the about reduction in, in 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 asset purchases or something to that nature. Um, Perhaps that's a catalyst to, to sell the euro and buy the dollar. I mean, you know, maybe it's less dollar related, even though the dollar bet would benefit from that. Maybe it's less dollar related and more um, more um, uh, uh, euro related, which obviously will move the dollar index. Because well, maybe after Friday, uh, his rhetoric, which uh, wasn't working when momentum was way against him, now that there's been just a little short term interruption in the uptrend. Maybe his rhetoric has a, you know, he, his jawboning could be more effective this time. Is my point. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It, 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 it may, maybe, maybe, maybe it will, maybe it will be because it's fun. Yeah. His, his rhetoric has fallen on deaf ears. Yeah, um, I mean, he got run over with his rhetoric before. 
Right, right. Well, um, uh, I don't know if Steve is here. Uh, Steve, are you here this morning? I see him. Yes, I am. Hey, Steve, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Blake. How it sounds, you? sounds like you got some good rest over the weekend, which is uh, looks like it's needed for you. Yeah, it was. Actually. I think he's still sleeping. <laughs> yeah, you said you you do you do sound sleepier than normal, and I know it's uh it's what two o'clock three three o'clock in the afternoon over there. Uh, it's three thirty. No, I'm not sleeping. Uh, I I wish, but no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a quiet session. Um, I I covered some of the majors, and I don't know if you heard my my. Uh, uh, oh, the, oh yes, I did. Okay, you know, and and I and I thought I'd leave the crosses for you, um, to 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 really discuss, but. But yeah, I'm not sold on the dollar strength that we're seeing right now. I mean, even though the dollar is stronger today, um, generally speaking, I'm not 100% convinced here. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, you know, dollar, uh, and I had even said it before the bounce, dollar strength is to be faded, but I don't think that the bounce is likely to be only one or two days long. You yeah, know, after I, such a downtrend. I, I agree with you. I, I think the dollar needs to be faded. You just don't want to fade it the, the, the first day, the second day of the bounce. I mean, it, yes, it's probably yes. going to bounce for, or consolidate, you know. Correct, and that's 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 actually probably going to be the worst possible outcome. You know, instead of getting much of a price bounce, getting like a, uh, you know, a, a few weeks of consolidation because uh, it's anyhow August, if we end up having everything trading in a range as well, you know, it's going to become very boring. So let, let's at, at least hope that it it um, recovers in price and not consolidates in, uh, you know, in distance in, in time. Right. Uh, because that's going to create some, uh, you know, tedious ranges for the euro, for the DXY and for some other crosses, obviously. The rebound is not going to be, uh, you know, equally strong. Um, in, in all, uh, you know, across the board, I mean, obviously, some pairs uh, might, might rebound more, some pairs might, you know, uh, further consolidate. As you've said, um, USD CAD has, has been showing, you know, one of the best rebounds. Um, most probably, this also has to do with sentiment, because, you know, sentiment in the USD CAD uh, was uh, the most extreme. Um, so th th that's that's why I'm guessing we're, we're also seeing the uh, the strongest of rebounds. But um, Steve, I just uh, passed the chart over to you so you can show the yeah, triggers. Yeah, yeah. About. There you go. I just I just took it. Um, so uh, you know, um, I, I said since you know the, this drawing was up here, you know, since we were there. Um, I, I doubted that we can easily scale 128. Worst case scenario, 130. And then I think we're going, you know, uh, for another low and then another low because, um, you know, we've been saying a long time ago that this move down is impulsive and, uh, you know, my target is uh, here actually at 115.60. Um, so, um, yeah, I do think that we have a lot more downside, uh, you know, for USD CAD and a lot more um, upside for other currencies against the US dollar. but. Obviously, you know, after such a run, for example, in the USD card, we we ran from 138 almost to 124. So, you know, that's a huge run, and that, that's that's not a run, you know, a three-month run that you can easily correct within five or six days. So, you know, it might get choppy, uh, but you know, we 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 we, sh we should get uh, you know a little bit higher. Uh, USD yen is rebounding as well as we had warned from uh, you know this level. It it actually you know the USD yen tried to to fake uh, people out on um, you know um, from the price action we saw you know just just before the NFPs because we seem to be rebounding and then we planned registered a new low for a couple of pips or whatever five pips whatever it was. And now we're rebounding again from this level. So uh, I think, you know, it all comes to this this triangle in essence. And, um, you know, uh, an intermediate uh, resistance level is 112. So, uh, you know, uh, here we have a range as well. And, you know, we need to monitor. Um, hi, Blake. Where would you be getting short Kiwi? Blake, if you're still here, um, Matt is asking where you would be getting Kiwi 
Uh, oh, I mean, I, I don't know where I'm going to get short. I mean, I, I'd like to see it bounce a little bit. Maybe, maybe a 20, 30, 40 pip bounce. Depends. Yeah, that, you know, it, 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 I mean, I'd love to see that, whether I get it or not. Just, you know, it, I, I, I'd love to tell you I'm going to get short right here, but you know, that's uh, it's unrealistic. You have to. You're when you're looking at other, you know, things. You, you know, hell, I might get short right where we're. At. I mean, if the euro takes a 20 pip nosedive from here, I'm probably going to just turn around and short the Kiwi. You know, it, 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 optimum would it be if it bounced 20, 30, 40 pips, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen that way. Yeah, on Friday I had uh, I had drawn this. I was hoping for a rebound, uh, you know, towards 0.7450, and if we got up to there, I was then willing to short it, you know, against the highs. But uh, today's candle uh, shows that you know this ain't happening. I mean, look uh, at look, look at the New Zealand yen. I mean, that, that that's a massive rejection of resistance. Yes, like definitely. a triple top. I mean, it massive, massive rejection of resistance. I mean, the the Kiwi yen looks like it's going to drop back below eighty, <laughs> if you ask me. I mean, it's and it's going to be hard for the New Zealand dollar to go higher when that when when we have a look like that, you know. I agree with you, although, uh, you know, we had an alternative drawing here, which is this, um, as you see, a possible cap and handle formation. If we see this uh, critical support zone at 80.50 hold, I had also written to my analysis, you know, that uh, once we got rejected from there, uh, which was in essence an overthrow of this ascending wedge, uh, and we 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 dipped ba down and uh, un uh, you know under the resistance and tested the support that the break below the support you know should uh, take us inevitably to 8050. But if we see a rebound from there, then there is also you know the bullish interpretation, which is in essence a flat top triangle here, which if it gets combined with a rebound from here, it's also going to be a cap and handle formation. So. I'm not, uh, you know, medium to long term, um, uh, I'm not um, bearish the Kiwi Yen, but I was bearish after this rejection here, and I do think that 80.50 is going to be tested. You know, worst, worst case scenario, we might see, uh, you know, even, even uh, you know, uh, a lower move, but I, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical because, you know, this is an impulsive move higher here. And I'm a little bit skeptical about if this is going to be like actually, you know, I don't, I don't so much believe in triple tops or triple bottoms, etc., uh, because you know they're, they're, they are very rare formations. And uh, I said one thing for sure, you know, last week that if we retest this zone for a fourth time, I definitely don't believe in a quadruple top formations. You know what I mean? So if we actually recover and get back here once again. I think that's going to be the last time. Uh, then we're penetrating above it. But one thing at a time, you know, I'm, I, I want to see a test at 80-50, and we see what happens from there. Because you know, this this is just a scenario. The, the sure thing is that you know, if we look at it shorter term, we had an ascending wedge, which is a terminal formation. We had a very nice rejection and a very nice candlestick pattern here, a dark cloud cover. And since then, we've seen what is it now? It's Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, uh, out of the last eight days, are bearish. Yeah, Blake. I, I, I just want to comment that on uh, and and um, I got a comment from from uh, Amanda in um, uh, in 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 my chat. She was just, she's she said it, and I, I was just going to mention it. And I totally agree with her. Um, he, she asked about the base of your your cup and handle. I mean, a cup and handle. Um, what I tend to look for is I tend to look for a bigger base, and not so much of a V-shaped recovery, but a bigger base, a consolidation. Um, the reason the the reason why cup and handles are so good is, is because they base for so long down at the bottom of the cup, like an actual teacup or a coffee mug. Yeah, I agree with you. It's not, it's not perfect. I mean, uh, you know, it's not perfect. It would be perfect, Steve, unless it had Forex analytics written on the coffee cup. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and not every head and shoulders is perfect as well. That doesn't mean it's, it's not going to play out. You're um, right. That's, but, that, but, it, but if you're trying to forecast, if you're, if, you're, if you're trying to forecast like this is going to be a handle, then, that, you know, that, 
that that's the the only point is I, I'm not I'm not sold on the idea um, because we didn't base long enough. I mean, if we were if like let's say we already formed the handle, so let's say we hit 80, then we came back up to 83 yen, and and then at that point I would say okay maybe this is a cup and handle, but since we no, have I agree even, with you. Uh, oh, I, agree, I agree with you. It's it's just like uh, you know shooting in the dark. In what sense? Is in the sense that we were having a discussion here talking about you know how important this zone is, and then the discussion came to you know I, I'm not a big believer of triple top formations, and that you know this recovery here that started breaking out from this triangle, uh, then we had uh, you know this ascending uh, trend line that was tested multiple and multiple times and lasted. You know, in essence, this creates, you know, a, a very good possibility that this is a flat top triangle. Um, usually I expect these to break to the upside. And then, you know, the conversation um, uh, just moved forward to, okay, so if we test it another fourth time, you know, uh, I, I expect it to break higher. And then somebody mentioned in the chat that if that happens, this is going to be a cup and handle. And I said, you're absolutely right, because if this happens, it is going to be a cup and handle. So it's not, you know, uh, forecasting a cup and handle. It's a conversation that moved yeah. forward and, you know, and it went like that. I uh, but, yeah. Uh, okay. No, me, you know, that's why Blake keeps me straight, you know. That's why it made an impression upon me when he said, I don't care about that. I care about what's happening now because, you know, I do this imagining stuff into the future. And uh, so I Yeah, it but, you know, plenty, 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 plenty of times, you know, making a couple of plans of what's going to happen next and next, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. No, because that, that, and then and, and everybody should do that. I, I, I try to envision what I think is going to happen. It, does, yeah. it obviously doesn't happen. The way of I, 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 I think more than more than more than it, it more than it, it 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 does. I mean, it doesn't, you know. So, so have you guys have you guys ever tried the George Costanza trading methodology? No, uh, I just he on, you do the he did the opposite of everything he used to do, and it worked out <laughs> pretty good for him. <laughs> I, I know I know traders. I I, I I specifically uh, target traders that. That I know that are on the wrong side. They make let, a move, and I'm always going on the other other end. Let oh. me guess that before this, that specific individual did that, he was a very bad trader, right? Because if doing the exact opposite of what he thought was ended up being very successful, I'm guessing <laughs> that free that no, method. I, no, I, I, I know. I on on the trading floor, I knew exactly who those people were, and they they were eventually out of the business. So I, but you know who they are. You you can target them and you see them and they make they they don't make money in the markets and you're like you're like yeah dude you're on the wrong side all the time so I'm always gonna fade you and you will eventually be out of the business and and it's uh, I've I've done that for years probably my whole career actually I just figure out who those people are and uh, I trade against them so. <laughs> but but and with some and of these you know, guys, so something contrarian uh, indicators are you know a very valid thing, right? Extremely, you, yeah. because people get caught up emotionally about things. They make they make bad decisions when things spike higher or spike lower, and you're like, you know, you, you, you there's no room for emotions when you're trading. So you, you know, it's like, you know, these people get so emotional. It's like, okay, now I know you're on the wrong side now. But by the way, Blake, uh, I wanted to show this as well uh, before I forget it. This is a tweet I favorited and retweeted today. Uh, no evidence of intervention. It's what I was saying, and I, I was arguing with almost everybody since two weeks ago that I don't believe the move in the Euro Swiss is an SNB uh, move. And this is what she says: no evidence of interventions in the in, in the FX market. More more important, first decrease in site deposits in 2017. Let me make this uh, let me make this um, you know uh, to be easily understood. Um, site deposits is oh, how would I say it? Um, it's what is created actually as a counterbalance when the SNB buys euros. Uh, using thin air in essence okay so um, in essence not only we didn't have an increase which would indicate you know uh, further interventions from the SNB but we actually had a decrease which 
also points to the fact that the Euro Swiss move, as I was saying, is a genuine move that we're seeing. It's actually investors repositioning, which is, which makes 100% sense. I warned since we were at 109 that something is changing. And, you know, it, if you're asking me, it was also a delayed reaction in the sense that um, the uh, factors that were pushing people to hold uh, the Swiss franc against the euro, especially, uh, had already receded, which was, you know, uh, intense and acute political risk uh, in the eurozone and, uh, you know, the stress in the financial system of the eurozone. So um, I I'll reiterate once again that I don't expect that this move is uh, is going to uh, reverse or fade. Okay. Uh, Dale, by the way, uh, how long do we have today? Because I know that I'm waiting for when Callum's here because I have something to do at 6:25. So I, I know, uh, I know, I know. I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just let you know when he shows okay. up. Okay, okay, buddy. So we can answer questions until then. Well, what was the Twitter handle of that gal that you just had up there? I'm trying to follow her. Uh, Nadia. Yeah, I'm a bit sure. Let me, let me find it. Let me find it. I think it was RGs at R. At N G H R B I, Nadia Garbi is your name. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, pound crosses. Definitely, we can look at the pound crosses. Uh, by the way, we had uh, warned about this ascending wedge. Uh, it played out perfectly. Now we're coming to the first support, 130. Let me be clear. I don't expect this zone to last this time. So, you know, theoretically speaking, it can. I had said many times when we surpassed 130 that as long as we hold this zone, you know, you have no reason to be bearish. But I also said like a couple of days ago that if we get rejected from this, this ascending wedge, I don't expect this zone to last and this hasn't changed. Which means that my, in my opinion, I still expect more uh, you know, um, more weakness uh, from the cable, and you know, I'm I'm starting by that to so we can have a look at the pound crosses. Okay, uh, this is the pound Aussie. Um, this is what I expected several days ago. Perhaps a retest, you know, this zone and uh, a rejection uh, and the channel. We did not uh, retest the channel, but we did retest the zone, which also includes the 200 DMA. This day that we had, uh, I mean, this candle that we had that day is extremely bearish because it was actually an, an outside um, shooting star uh, and, and, and quite a long one. So, you know, when you see a candle like this on a zone that you, you already expect that might, uh, you know, produce uh, some reaction, you know, you don't try to fade that, uh, as simple as that. And the next day, which was a, a Marubozu uh, closing black, also, uh, in, in a sense, uh, validated uh, this reversal. You know, today we're seeing uh, like a, a neutral candle more or less, but, you know, as long as we have these two candles here, you know, I have to remain bearish against, uh, you, know, you know, against the high and uh, why not? We, we might easily see at least one more low. So now that we know what happened here, we don't need this anymore, but we know that this is what might happen okay so if we extend this and we extend this we should get a new low more likely than not you know before a reaction higher okay so this is about the pound dozy now about the pound kiwi, the pound kiwi, uh, you know, I said since a long time ago that it's one of the pairs that you don't have much to do because in essence, look at it, it, it has been trapped in a range. I mean, we, we're in essence since, when is it? Since the beginning of June. So we, we were already two months uh, in a range. It, it's not a very small range. It's a 500 pip range, although 500 pips, you know, for these kind of crosses, you know, it's not, you know, anything really much, but, you know, what, what it has been doing is it has been testing support, then propelling higher, finding the resistance zone, going lower or consolidating, 
again and again and again and again. So uh, in my opinion, as long we also have this ascending trend line, though, to be honest. Uh, so you know, you th this this of course is moving higher. So it, it's now above the uh, support zone. But honestly, as long as we remain within this range. I wouldn't be doing anything now if you see a break above this range or a break below this range you know obviously you know another leg higher or lower is gonna you know is gonna start but until then you know i would rather look at at other crosses to trade uh, now having to do with um with uh, the pound card this is what we had drawn and it actually played out you know more nicely nicely than expected because you know we were up here from what i see we said we're gonna move uh, we're going to resume a little bit lower than perhaps seeing a rebound and then seeing a, re a retest of the zone. Now, this worked, this worked. That does not mean that this move is going to work. We might see, you know, something like this now. We might. But, uh, you know, I have no reason to tell that this move is complete. I know that we got rejected from, from the 200 EMA again. I know that we failed once again to uh, to post a higher high. So, you know, until proven otherwise, this this remains in a downtrend, perhaps, perhaps it's even a channel. Let's have a look at it. It needs a little bit of a trial and error here because we need to create some parallels and see, but... See. Ah, something like that. Okay, so, uh, you know, as long as we don't break above the channel, you know, this scenario that uh, I had drawn out here um, probably remains, you know, the most likely. I mean, another thrust higher, perhaps towards the support zone. Uh, on the other hand, if you see a break, because if you <coughs> see here, the 200 DMA and the channel resistance coincide around here. So if you see a rebound, a test of the resistance and the break above it, then we actually have a break above the channel. So in this case, then we can switch to you know to a bullish scenario until then you know you have no reason to not look lower okay so uh as long as we remain below 167 let's call it 50 to be a round number um you can remain bearish but if you see a break above there which is also going going to constitute a break above the channel you know you might want to reconsider because you know this might have been the end of this move lower. I'm zooming out so I, you know, we put things in context as well. Huh? Okay, so this this has to do with pound card. Card Swiss, sure. Dale, uh, you you just go ahead and tell me whenever. Huh? Okay, buddy. Uh, three minutes. I'm going to start. I see you in the house, Callum. Well, you were in the house. Okay, I'll let you know, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Okay, cut Swiss. Cut Swiss, uh, still the uh, inverted uh, head and shoulders formation. It's not the prettiest one, but it looks really good. Good. Uh, we we do see some we do see some weakness at the moment, but you know after such a move, you know it's not like a big surprise or anything. Uh, for me, uh, you know um, this zone will be important, the 076 roughly zone. So as long as we stay above it you know, a bull scenario, you know, even a deeper correction, a bull scenario, as, as long as we stay above this consolidation here, uh, it remains very likely, very likely. So I want to see a reaction from here, and then it's very likely that I'm going to be interested uh, to be a buyer, especially since I believe that, you know, Swiss uh, franc weakness might continue, and after a respite, I, I believe that CAD strength has more to run. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, this move higher was a little bit tired. It needs, you know, it, it needs a relief. Uh, uh, but after that, you know, why not resume higher? I mean, uh, th th this is more likely than not. Okay. Uh, and, and this move lower for the time being definitely doesn't look impulsive. It looks like this. It looks like this. It, it looks like just a corrective consolidation, call it, you know, lower. Okay. So uh, I think we should remain constructive uh, for it. Did you cover Guppy? No. Okay, I'm curious. Let's go. There we go. 
Okay. This is what we had drawn there. Yeah. That, uh, you know, um, a move lower, one more leg lower, uh -huh. should then likely target the confluence of right. this ascending trend line, which is the triangle support, and the right. 61.8. So, uh, you know, this remains the most likely scenario. As long as we remain below there, you know, another leg lower, uh, okay, we obviously we might rebound, uh, you know, higher from there. So, for example, even if it's a simple ABC, if we take an extension here and we say that this was the high, this was the low and this was the high, it gives us a target of 143. So, but the 127.2 also coincides with this double confluence. So it makes it a, a triple confluence. I like so, that area. Yeah, so I would say that anywhere between 142 and 143 is a good area to see a rebound. And if we do see a rebound, you know, it might be actually, uh, you know, a bottom. So um, until then, I don't see any major supports. So, you know, 142 to 143, what's out for this area? If you see some, some good reaction, you know, I, I will tend to trust it if I see some strong reaction from there. Okay, thank you, Steve. You know, looking at the formation, uh, there'd be a bit real problem if it doesn't hold 42. Don't oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Because okay. if it doesn't hold 42, you know, things are going to start start looking a lot differently because for the time being, I'm treating this as a bullish formation. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But a break below here, which is also the 200 EMA, is going to create, you know, a totally different formation afterwards. Yeah. 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 But my main scenario remains a bullish one. So I'm looking right. for, you know, this area to hold. Yeah. So it's worth a probe on the long side and you'll know uh, if that long doesn't work, that you could be short for a while. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even yeah. sure I'm going to be long. It depends. Yeah. I mean, if I do see a reaction from that zone, yes, I, yeah. I will be long. You know what I mean? But okay. if let's say we see some violent move penetrating through it, you know, without any kind of yeah. a reaction, I will immediately reconsider. Yeah, because we're probably going back to the October lows if that happens. All yeah. right, I have I have Callum here. So I'm going to get this started a little earlier. Thank you, Steve, for okay, I'm, so glad you're, I'm so glad your son's better and you're resting. I was praying for that. I'm glad it finally happened. And thank you, Blake. We uh, Everyone enjoy our bantering this morning, some good ideas. I'm looking forward to Turnaround Tuesday. But right now, we're fortunate to have Callum Thomas with us. And he's a, t uh, a top elite type technician. Uh, he has a website called Top Down Charts. And Callum, I'm making you the presenter. So looking forward to hearing your voice and seeing your screen and yep. getting some views of what's on your radar screen, buddy. All right. Uh, can you hear me? I can, Callum. Uh, nice to meet you. All right. Great. So I'm in New Zealand and it is 1 a.m. Yeah. here. Yeah, really. I, I how many I'm going to a couple hours sleep before this, so um, you know, I'm um, we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many energy drinks did you have today? Uh well, if you if you read my Twitter feed, you would have seen that I failed to make um, my morning coffee today. But um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, before we get to your uh, what you want to show the PMI, and uh, I've been to the site; it's excellent. Mm -hmm. It's a real nice site for intelligence gathering. How did you get into the business? Can you tell us a little bit about the beginning yeah. of your journey? Uh, who influenced you and how did you get from there to here? Yeah, so, I mean, I started this company about almost a year ago now. And um, before that, I was in um, on the buy side. So at a pretty large engine company in Australia and New Zealand. So I worked in both the Australia and the New Zealand offices. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'd worked there for about eight years and across uh, quite a range of roles there, but mostly investment strategy economics. And you know, it's, uh, it's quite a different ball game when you're in that kind of zone versus um, necessarily the, you know, doing it on your own. 
Um, you know, and, I mean, the, the kind of stuff that I did there, and, and certainly the way that I frame my research or the, the audience of my research is sort of more the, I guess, um, what is pension fund managers, family officers, people who are generally looking, you know, over six, 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 to 12, six to 12 month um, horizon kind of thing. Yeah, and more um, institutional views. Exactly, yeah, and you know, typically they'll 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 be managing money over you know a longer term period, and they'll set up their um, you know strategic benchmark, and they'll be tilting around that, and so um, you know, feeding in um, things like you know what's going on with Japanese equities, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that they're quite interested in, um, and so uh, you know, it's 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 very good. Um, you know, I've got a got a small base of clients so far and steadily building on that and you know as as the client list grows you actually learn a lot from what they're focusing on because you obviously get questions from them um, alongside the stuff that, that you provide and um, I think that you've got my screen have you got my screen on there I do we're looking at your top-down chart screen right now with the PMI yeah. things being number one yep so this is the weekly report that I put out, and uh, I thought that it's probably, unless you had any, you know, questions or if you wanted me to go anywhere in particular, um, we can probably have a look at this. Okay, well, uh, I'm I'm following you here, so let let's just carry on with what you plan to talk to us about. Yeah, and um, oh, just for you know, how long do we have here? Don't worry, I, I'll interrupt you. Yeah, I have right. a reputation for being the interrupter, so. Um, yep. Till about uh, 20, we have about 20 minutes, Callum. Okay, good. And yeah, uh, please do um, interrupt me with questions, especially if I, um, if I get too far ahead of myself. Okay. All right, so this first one, um, we'll always start, with, always start with the bottom line, um, the top down. So for this one, um, my overall message here was that the global PMI data are consistent with the positive growth inflation outlook, and you know it's about the underlying data and trends that support that whole reflation theme. So I don't know if you um, yes about the play of that one, but it's certainly um, it's one that yeah. sort of it's almost it coming down. It unwound for a while, exactly. uh, yeah, and and now you think it's back in gear. You know, with uh, mainly like a lot of industrial commodities uh, have mm -hmm. really been performing quite well. Copper being the benchmark, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. This is probably this chart here is probably the one that kind of tracks the whole thing. So the red line there is what I call the reflation or risk on speculative futures positioning indicators. So that tracks um, the the CEO. Of the CFTC's um, commitment to traders report, okay. regular future positioning. So, and I've combined it across equities, commodities, and bonds. Bonds are in there inverted, so you know, um, you know, it's it's to, it's designed to be consistent, right? Um, and you know, we saw it was really a phenomenal run up in um, positioning. You know, everyone bought into that whole um, reflation trade, and then you know, if you look at it now, it's been completely unwound. Um, so I think that that there is probably a very significant thing to um, to have on the radar. And the, the blue line there is is a similar measure across it's, it's across the same three groups of assets, but it's looking at 200 day moving average breadth. Um, you know, which is quite a you know well used indicator in the stock market. But then I've applied it to commodities and bonds as well, and you can see that it's it's kind of moving in, in line there, but you know this big reset has happened there, and I think you know it's important to keep these kind of indicators in mind because this is what's sort of, you know you're using data. This, from, is, this is what drives the narrative, correct? Well, yeah. well you're using the data to measure what people are thinking, and um, I guess the price line there, um, it's effectively a price line, um, is is what's been Sort of shifting people's uh, attention in the short term. But then you know you look at that chart to the right there, and this is what I call um, the deflator meter. I like to make a lot of sort of unique, innovative charts here, and um, 
this is one of them. It's uh, looked across as many different countries as I have the data for. And so for, and it, and it measures what proportion are uh, seeing deflation. So that red line there, that's yeah. the CPI. So we, we had at that 2015 period there, like that was when we had that bond market, you know, bonds yeah. um, going to the record lows. At that, at that stage, you know, if you probably remember, and um, so we, we probably one the one that stands out for me on this one. They, they're all consistent, but you know, forward in, earnings that fell off the cliff. Well, seventy percent of because because this is measuring countries that are in deflation that are seeing negative year-on-year -year growth rates, right? So at that time, in you know late twenty sixteen, seventy percent of countries. You know, the majority of countries were seeing actual you know, downgrades or declines in their forward earnings. And um, you know, throughout this whole post-crisis period, it's been this, um, you know, even if you set aside the price inflation aspect, you look at the economic you know, aspect, it's been economic deflation throughout that period where you know, almost half of um, countries across that period, like at least 40 percent we're seeing negative or declining contracting industrial production and then all of a sudden that's turned around so i guess the you know you compare and contrast to that 2005 to 2007 period where virtually no one was seeing deflation at that time and now we've kind of returned to that well the well the market implications for what you're seeing here well you know anything that's well it, it kind of comes back to wh whether this here you know lurch away from deflation persists and my view is that it does you know so if we look at the pmis here it's basically indicating pretty good manufacturing conditions um you know, we've seen a turn up there in us and china which have been traveling pretty closely together Lately, which um, I think is a key. Do you consider uh, these uh, a leading or coincident lagging indicators? Or are these projecting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, kind of like in hockey, Cal? You yeah. know, is this where the puck is, or is this where the puck's going to be? I think these are where the puck is. Okay. Um, I mean, for the most part, it it kind of depends, but like this is probably the best. Uh, Real time indicator that you can get into um, where the economy is tracking certain parts of it, like this this here one, the global trade one. But that red line combines the trade indicators, and that has about a four to six month lead, um, which is still pointing to an ongoing rebound in global trade. Um, and that was that was probably one of the big calls that I had last year. That there one. You think any protectionist moves are, uh, does any of this, will it change dramatic, uh, dramatically if there's any kind of trade war, say between, uh, you know, tariffs and so forth happening between China and the U.S. or anywhere else, Russia yeah. sanctions? Uh, yeah. It play a role here? It definitely would. Um, but, you know, I think it would, it, it, were it to be actually implemented, which is something that's you know yet to happen, um, it would show up in these numbers. Okay. And you know I think um, I showed a chart actually. I'll see if I can figure it out in the latest weekly chart storm that I do on Twitter. Um, and it shows that this big drop off in interest around uh, Trump's policies, right? So this one here, the. Mentions of Trump policy in the earnings calls, and so the latest one, the Q2 earnings calls, the, the blue line there, and for me that represents a whole, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've kind of given up on the whole idea now that, that he's going to even do anything positive or negative, uh, you know, which is one way to interpret that chart. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I always say that 
you have to try and see things as they are, not as you want to see them. And um, you know, for now, global trade's actually going fairly well. I mean, so would, would you favor? Uh, yeah. Uh, what what markets would you favor? A lot of people have been, uh, mm. you know, much more bullish emerging markets in Europe over the U.S. Uh, some yep. people would say, uh, you know, that was kind of a Jeff Gunlich type of trade. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the areas of the world that you're investing in now? Yeah, so probably yeah, emerging markets is definitely high on the radar. Uh, that, I mean, valuation reasons alone are fairly compelling there. And when you see global trade improving like that, and China um, you know, making this tentative rebound there, Emerging markets are uh, going to be the ones that are going to benefit from that, and um, probably worth just jumping into a little bit of unusual analysis that I did here. So, I direct your attention to the equity multiplier chart, which is the one on the bottom right here. That red line there is tracking leverage in emerging markets. So. It's gone up a lot. <laughs> it's gone up to um, develop market standards, really. And one implication of that is that you only need to see a small improvement in profitability, you know, headline profitability, profit margin, to, 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 to flow through into a higher return on equity. And from an equity investor's perspective, that's you know, it's the number one thing that they're concerned about, right? And um, you know you can see that synchronised upturn in return on equity across the major equity markets there that um, really is mirroring what we're seeing um, at a global economic level. So uh, basically, yeah. all your work is saying uh, uh, all uh, you know green lights, you know full speed ahead. Um, global bull markets should continue until things change. Yeah, and I mean, but it's the global growth outlook that that gives me comfort. It's these charts, these kind of charts here, uh, and probably the other one that I look at perhaps more than others is this here one: property prices. Yeah, so, they've been exploding everywhere. Exactly, and. Um, well, we, we kind of should expect it, right? Um, given what's going on in monetary policy, um, you know, yeah, the Fed's heading to the exits, um, but even even then, it's it's a slow exit, and everyone else has got it going on full blast. You look at this chart here, um, maybe less so Japan, but the rest of them. This is basically the world's major economies. All of them are seeing year-on-year -year gains in property prices. It's been a while since we've actually seen everyone. In this uh, positive zone, you know, the last time we saw that was really uh, pre-crisis, and ever, ever since we had the crisis, it's been, you know, China was going full blast, but the rest of them were sort of still not quite caught up. And and property prices are so key because they influence consumer confidence, um, banks asset quality, banks willingness to lend, ability to lend, um, and you know. When things go to crap on this front, it just precipitates all the risks. You know, for China, um, you know, I watch China's market particularly closely. For, for any Australian-based investor, you know, you actually probably look at China close, more closely than you do America because um, you know China has that big impact on commodities, and you know, for Australia, um, <laughs> that also has a um, big impact on house prices. You know, I think they're in a similar situation to Canada. So, so do interest rates. So, um, uh, what's your view on global bond markets? And there yep. are some signs I'm seeing in the U.S. Treasury market that says, you know, we could head up towards that three percent yield. Would that put a dent in the real estate bubble or acceleration that you're seeing now? Is is that the pin that pops the real estate yep. bubble? Yes, um, would be the short answer. Um, That's I like short answers. Yeah, well, like <laughs> you could just say yes, no. And <laughs> the, the thing is, like 
you, you look at this, um, I'm talking about Australia, probably not many people are that interested in Australia, but you know, they've had a massive housing market boom, some would say bubble. And it's very similar to what's going on in Canada. Um, actually, you know, very similar to what's going on in Canada in terms of um, how they've had a you know, yeah. very buoyant housing market there. And the same thing in New Zealand, actually. Um, and I actually did a piece on it. It's called called the McCann's economies. You know, they've, they've all got overvalued housing markets. And how do you see a um, a housing market, you know, boom or bubble, if you want to call it, like that resolve? Um, or you know, unwind. It's yeah, higher interest rates, higher unemployment. Um, but the, those are pretty much the, t the the key culprits. So, but even then, you know, you you need a big jump in interest rates to to really donk it on the head. But what do you think? Yeah, would, what do you think it would take? Four percent ten year doubling of rates here. Yeah, that would definitely cause some issues. Yeah. <laughs> Um, four percent on the on the bond on the ten year um, if it well you know it's always a matter of um, there's, there's always two dimensions right this time yeah, and it um, looks like if it gets through time, two five two different. six it looks like if it gets through two five two six three is the next stop, uh, next stop no problem. yeah hundred percent yeah yeah well, I think three three kind of seems quite reasonable to me I mean given yeah. Historically, yeah. Well, given what I'm seeing in the global um, inflation growth dynamics, I mean, it just seems quite natural that we should get there. Um, and I think I've pulled up an Excel chart here. It's my U.S. Treasury sentiment index, and it's already turned around from extreme bullish levels. So uh, that one keeps on going. That's a, that's that's been a good indicator in the past. Okay, thank you. But uh, oh, since we're on the since we've got this chat up here, um, bond volatility. You want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. Um, so bond volatility is zero zero. Yeah, it's it's, uh -huh. it's yeah. Is that it's, a real it's, number? It's, there is it's non-existent. <laughs> well, it's just like the VIX, right? It's gone down yeah. to. Um, Really low levels, and you know, yeah. yeah. I, I think that this chat here is a is a great one because you know it got to this, it got to very similar levels just before we got the taper. This is this, this is about when we got that taper tantrum. Now. Um, yeah, and you know we're 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 heading into um, September, which you know I think September is a pretty good, pretty good um, opportunity to get QT underway. Were um you know passive quantitative tightening. Okay, where they're uh, uh, they're starting to trim their balance sheet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, uh, I think you know that it's pretty much the. They have to. Now. They have to tell all their their buddies at Jackson Hole first before they do it. That's right. Yeah. Right? You know, they get together, do a shot of tequila, and go, "Okay, guys, yep. we're going to start tr <laughs> trimming our balance sheet," <laughs> and it's it's a pretty big one. So yep. support is so it's a smooth ride. So exactly. Yeah. Well, Callum, I, I appreciate you staying up so late, brother. And uh, you're invited to join our community. And uh, I know that people could follow you. Your Twitter handle is at Callum underscore Thomas. And yep. and your service is at Top Down Charts. And yep. very interesting, fundamental, a technical way to look at fundamentals which exactly. uh, I found very interesting and uh, I wish you uh, success uh, being away from the institutions. I'm glad they let you out and <laughs> we were able <laughs> and we were able to have this interview, buddy. Great. Good to talk. All right. So thanks very much. I'll tweet the interview and I'll drop it in your, uh, in your box and Twitter and uh, maybe we could get together later on in the year and, see what your yeah. stuff is saying at that time yeah exactly yeah, thank you Callum. all yeah. right thank you Callum. you're you're now my trading warrior brother everyone thank sure. Callum thomas and follow him and keep an eye as blake morrow says fundamentals are at least half the picture so here's a, a nice way for you guys to look at it 
Uh, I'm wrapping it a little early today, guys. I'll see everyone tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Good hunting the rest of the day. I still, I still like selling rallies in Euro. Stops above last week's high, looking for a pullback. I think 115 is a natural place for it to end up over the course of the next week, few weeks. But I do believe we'll take out the highs that we posted last week as well. Good hunting. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Thanks again, Callum.